Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, the old guy, Hi-Fi channel. Today's video is a little bit of a rant and a little bit of an introduction. Um, I thought I would take a few moments and introduce myself and kind of give you guys my background uh, to add some credibility to maybe some of the things I say. Um, let me start out by saying that I really, I believe opinions are like assholes and every asshole has one. So take that, what I say with a grain of salt, question me if you want to in the comments. I appreciate that kind of stuff. And I'd love for you to share with me your thoughts on things. <clears throat> so I've been involved in audio, home audio, home theater, professional audio, uh, professional audio visual integration, and car audio for really kind of going on and off for 50 years. So I've worked for closely with a number of large manufacturers. Um, I've worked in retail, managed a chain of five stores, um, and uh, was a part owner of a car audio, high-end car audio store, when we went and competed professionally in the IASCA uh, competitions. <clears throat> so I've owned a lot of hi-fi gear. I've been exposed to a lot of hi-fi gear. I was exposed early on through my father and his hi-fi gear and his buddies that were all trying to one-up each other with hi-fi gear. It was kind of fun. Um, so I, I remember mono recordings. I remember stereo recordings. I remember all of it you know, cassette, a track, uh, digital audio tape, uh, L cassette, um, obviously CD, mini disc, LP vinyl, all of those things. <clears throat> so that's, I just want to kind of give you a background. I've had expensive gear in the past and really my goal is, uh, and here's my definition of an audiophile and it's very much like Steve Guttenberg's. It's someone who listens to music proactively without doing something else for a fairly good period of time. And so in my estimation, if you can listen to music, for over an hour and not do anything else and just focus on listening to the music, that makes you an audiophile. The equipment you own isn't what makes you an audiophile. How much money you spend on it doesn't make you an audiophile. It is your enthusiasm for the music, again, audio file. So I understand that we love the gear too, and that's fun. And if you can afford to do expensive gear, that's really good. I also wanna kind of define high end. High end is not a sound quality. High end, there's no agreed to definition of what high end. Now, <clears throat> I'll grant the term high end to very expensive equipment that's very well constructed. Dan, Diagost Dan Diagostino's amps, the Griffin stuff, Wilson speakers, those kinds of things are beautifully engineered and they're high end in their construction but high end doesn't mean they sound necessarily good. Everybody's going to have their own opinion on whether or not they sound good. And since there's no way for there to be a universal you know, way to quantify what good sound is, I'm going to keep high end just like you would with a watch. So if you have a Rolex or a Patek Philippe, those are beautiful high end watches. They're constructed marvelously. They're, they're absolute marvels of engineering and hand construction and just craftsmanship. But they don't tell time any better than a, just a regular Seiko. I mean, one second's one second, one minute's one minute. But I can I can absolutely agree with the, the enthusiasm and appreciation for the construction and the engineering. It's like a Porsche, the most beautifully engineered vehicle in the world. Are they the most reliable? No. Are they the fastest? Maybe not. Are they amazing to drive? Absolutely. So that's what high end means to me. It's not a sound quality. So one of the things I also want to talk about is this hobby at right now seems to be populated with a bunch of old guys like me and old guys like me tend to have opinions. Remember what I said about opinions. In my estimation, you can't pass judgment on anyone based on an opinion, right? Everybody's entitled to their opinion. You may not agree with the opinion. And in my estimation, if you don't agree with the opinion, keep your mouth shut, share yours and just let it go at that. But don't try to change someone else's mind. So all of this, well, you didn't, it's not an audiophile product. All right, no one agrees to can agree to what audio file is. For me, an audio file is a person, not a product. Oh, it's high end. All right, is it really well built? Could be. Does it describe the sound quality? Not at all. The only person that can really make the judgment on whether or not something sounds good is you. For me, what I listen to is totally different than what you may like. My goal with my system is very smooth, warm, but detailed sound because seriously, I listen for hours on end every day and I don't do anything else. <clears throat> I'll put in a Mahler symphony and listen, sit there and listen to the whole thing for 60 minutes. Sometimes there are two discs. And that's the thing I really love is I'm from old school. You know, you got an album, you played both sides. I like to listen to a whole album or whole CD or in the case of streaming, you know, that record that's being offered to me. Um, there may be a song I don't like and I could always skip it, but I'm gonna listen through because the artist is trying to do something there. So. 
Again, actively listening to music without doing anything else. That's what makes you an audiophile, in my opinion. Also, too, let's talk about the barriers to entry that old, goofy audiophiles like me sent, tend to throw up with all of these, well, you didn't spend $5,000, oh, it's not this brand, or whatever. That's not the way it should be, right? You can have a really good audio system and not spend a lot of money. Let me give you an example. Um, when we had the retail stores here in Chicago, we were a big Harman Kardon dealers, CAF. We did audio research. Uh, we did um, Hafler equipment. We did JBL speakers. We did Kenwood. We did Marantz. We did Pioneer. We had Boston Acoustics, Epicure. Um, I'm not going to remember all of them, but we had a really good lineup of product from kind of upper, lower, maybe, you know, expensive range. You know, I could put together an $8,000 system for you, but, you know, back in the late 80s, that was pretty expensive. So I had this philosophy professor from the local college come in and he needed a new stereo system. His stuff had broken or gotten old or whatever. And so he, we, I put it together for him. He had a very limited budget, obviously, being a college professor. So we did a little Harman Kardon receiver. We did a very nice um, Techniques turntable, a good grade out cartridge, and a very nice pair of KEF speakers. And I think they were the very first generation of the KEF UniQ. I want to say C45, something like that. So around, if I remember, about $1,500. It's still a significant amount of money, but in today's money, that's not a lot. Um, and he took it home and then... I, he would come in every once in a while because we also sold records and he'd look for records. And I asked him how things were going. He invited me over. This guy was the biggest audiophile I've ever known in my entire life. And he had a very modest system, but he loved music and especially classical music and especially Beethoven. So I went over to his house and we, I spent probably a couple hours there just listening. He's the kind of guy that had uh, eight full Beethoven cycles, all nine symphonies done by Von Karian in the Berlin. Uh, Schulte in the CSO, uh, Andre Previn in the London Symphony, like that. And he, if you, I could, I could put on any record random and he could tell me what orchestra and what conductor was. And in the case of Sir George Schulte, he did, I think, three total Beethoven cycles, but he, two were one with CSO, I think maybe two with CSO and one with like the Vienna Orchestra when he was early on in his career. And he could tell which, which version it was and automatically. So he appreciated the music. He listened deep into the music. He heard those subtle nuances and he did it on a system that didn't cost a lot of money. And I'm here to say, you can do that today. It is very easy. There are a lot of really good affordable products. Um, some of it, a friend of mine in Austin, Texas calls FunFi, um, you know, Asian made products that offer really good performance. And if you want to get an idea of the performance of those, uh, Randy Messman, the cheap audio man, does a great job. Uh, Matt Corrigandale uh, does a really good job with his stuff. Uh, there are some other folks that do really good reviews of that stuff. Even Steve Gutenberg does affordable equipment, although he tends to live kind of more upscale. He's kind of the dean of uh, YouTube audio reviewers. Um, but anyway, that's the point is you don't need to spend a lot of money. What you need to do and th th where, where you have to put in some effort is Listen to as much as you can before you buy. Now, if you heard something at a trade show, I promise you it's going to sound ten. To, it's going to sound hundred percent different once you get it into your house. So, trade shows are terrible places. They're nice places to discover stuff and maybe do further investigation. Maybe talk to one of the manufacturer's representatives there and got to get an idea. If you can get a philosophy from the manufacturer, like what their goal is, then sometimes you can make some value judgments based on their product. And then I would recommend you work with a retailer like Crutchfield. And I have no affiliation with any of these people. Um, but work with someone like Crutchfield who's got a liberal return policy. Now, what I did in my system in one of my videos, I went and I chose Cambridge for my amplifier because I really love the sound. And I knew in up front I was going to really enjoy that sound because in truth, Sean Fowler at Zero Fidelity reviewed the AXR100. Andrew Robinson reviewed the AXR100 and gave it his budget amp of the year. I had a chance to hear it in my house and really fell in love with it. Um, and then what I did was I went to eBay. Cambridge has a, a refurb or B-stock open box store on eBay. And I bought it B-stock. I bought my Shit by Frost deck B-stock. I bought my Manny preamp uh, B-stock. I bought my... Um, uh, what else did I get B-stock? I don't remember. But anyway, I shopped carefully and chose based on what I kind of knew I wanted. Um, and so that's the thing is take a little time. 
Uh, figure out what kind of sound signature you're looking for. Figure out what you can accommodate in your room and in your budget. And then do a little investigation to find out maybe if that's the sound you're looking for. And don't be afraid if you don't spend a lot of money. As long as you get what you're looking for, that's all that's important. So to steal a tagline from, from Andrew Robinson, the only person that's got to like your system is you. Now, please, I'd love to have you hear your comments on this. I don't know. I did try not to say anything controversial, and I got a lot of controversial ideas, but I'll maybe share those in a different video. My thing is, I worry about old guys like me creating barriers of entry for younger people to get involved in audio. Listening on your phone through a pair of wireless ear pods, AirPods isn't hi-fi. I'm sorry. It might sound good and it's great on the run and everything else, but you're in a high noise environment outdoors, in a bus, on a train, in a plane, whatever. So you're not going to be able to hear it properly. But that said, if you're enjoying your music, that's wonderful. If you can, and I will tell you right now, a good stereo system, one that brings you pleasure, will improve your health and make you live longer. And let me set that up by this statement. So, you work all day, let's say. You commute, um, you know, I live out in the suburbs of Chicago. So Burlington Northern into the city, eight hours there because it's an hour and a half commute one way, hour and a half commute the other way. Work was crappy that day. Your blood pressure's high. You got heartburn. You're just tense. You get home. The kids have been driving your wife crazy. You know, you, you get everything calmed down and do what you need to do. But go down or go into your listening room and put on one of your favorite pieces of music and it doesn't have to be loud. Just play that music, close your eyes, and breathe deep. And meditate, focus on just the music. It'll clear your mind, your blood pressure will come down, your heart rate will come down, everything will be better. Find those moments of peace and calm, and you can do that even with a modest stereo system, but with music you love. And so I encourage you, please, take the time to really listen. Put on your favorite music. Close your eyes, turn off the lights, just relax, breathe deep, and focus on the music. Try to find an instrument in that particular song and try to follow that instrument all the way through the song. In the next song, pick a different instrument. Try to follow that through the whole song and make that your focus, not all of the nonsense that happened during your day. Guys, thank you so very much. I appreciate your viewing my videos. Um, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. I would love to get a like from you. I would also very much like to hear your comments. I do read every comment. I will respond if it's appropriate to respond. If you just say great video, I might give you a, a hearted, uh, you know, like kind of thing. Uh, but I would love to hear your experiences. Again, it should be enjoyable. It should be fun. It doesn't matter how much money you spend. It doesn't matter what brand you bought. If you like it, that's all that's really important. Well, I'm Ed. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. I really appreciate you tuning in today. Thank you so very much.